Welcome in everyone to the Let's Talk Network. Today we are talking Utah football and specifically a fall camp preview. We're going to be going through all of the different position groups in Utah football. I'm um, talking about our confidence on a scale mm. of one to 10. And then we are going to be picking some X factors on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. So here we have pulled up um, Utah's roster, uh, sort of by position. So we're going to go with DBs first, which includes corners and safeties. Landon, what are your initial thoughts on this? Yeah, call? so there's a lot to talk about here. Miles battle with the transfer. As you can see, he's 6'4". I love that size, which is going to be awesome. And that paired with Zamaya Vaughn, two long athletic corners. I feel pretty good about that. And I'll just stay on the cornerbacks for now, and then we can all scroll down to safeties later. So how are you guys feeling about corners? Um, I definitely feel better about the corners than I do about the safeties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, obviously, Zamaya Vaughn, I think, is going to be our best corner this year. We have Miles Battle coming back. We have Broughton, who is solid, albeit not a star. Um, yeah, I think the corners are in a pretty decent spot. We also have some freshmen coming in um, as far as Smith Snowden mm -hmm. and CJ Blocker come yeah. in. And we also have Teo Johnson, who switched from wide receiver to cornerback. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I would, I'm excited to see if Teo Johnson can make any – any plays this year get on the field at all? Um, watching his high school tape, the dude is fast. He has athleticism. The That's dude is for quick. Sure. Six, We've got to get him on the field somewhere. Six one, nearly two hundred pounds. Like he is built big. He can he can he can tackle mm -hmm. for sure. I love to see him on special teams. The dude has very quick feet. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm always I've always been really big on Zamaya Vaughn. I love his size. Yeah. I love his his. People are saying last year. I think who was it? I think it was. I think it was Clark. He was saying like Zamaya is the fastest player on the team. Yeah, I remember that. And having a guy like Jalen Dixon on your team, Nate Johnson on your team, and saying <laughs> having a guy like Cam on your team, yeah. rising, <laughs> having Zamaya Vaughn be the fastest. Bryson Barnes on your team, and you say that it's bold. Zamaya Vaughn being the fastest player in that yeah. in that bunch, it's pretty it's pretty elite. So I, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see, and then we all obviously see Miles Batter, Miles yeah. Battle get that pick in the spring game was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about it really, but. Who do you guys think is going to replace Clark Phillips as that number one corner? Uh, I think it's probably Zamaya Vaughn. You and think then, so? Um, probably Miles Battle across the number two. But I think those are probably pretty interchangeable because Miles Battle was really good at Ole Miss. I think yeah. those are, are one and two guys on the outside. Mm -hmm. for Man, sure. I've watched some of Miles Battle's highlights. I'm really high on him. I think he's going to be our number one corner this year. I love his size, and I feel like he has a great feel for the game. He just knows how to defend. It's funny because he kind of is the exact opposite corner as what Clark was. Exactly. He's a lot more um, baseline corner, taking um, taking a one-on-one -on -one and really uh, attacking the ball in the air, where Clark was just so much smarter and be able to cut cut in lanes and help these and take the ball from before they even get to them. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's going to be kind of interesting. We have a lot of ball hawks on our team. I don't know. I'm not 100% confident in their coverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage, man-to-man, -man, but... I would not be surprised if we have one of our best uh, um, turnover ratios in a while mm. with these guys. Yeah, let's talk about the safeties a little yeah. bit. Obviously, at safeties, we have uh, Cole Bishop coming back. Um, we also have Nate Ritchie off a of mission, and we have Sione Baki, who played that nickel role in safety quite a bit this last year. Um, I do think this is a good group, but we have a lot of strong safeties and not a ton of free safeties. Um I do think coverage over the top could be an issue because last year, according to uh, Pick 6 previews, uh, Utah was 60th in passing defense, 89th in yards per attempt per throw, 85th in QB rating, 90th in completion percentage, and 97th in explosive pass. And so even last year, we really did not have a strong pass defense. And yes, those numbers are a little deceiving because we played some of the best passing offenses in the country, but... That is a major area of concern mm -hmm. for me, especially that explosive pass where we ranked 97th. Yes. We need to be able to prevent deep balls over the top where we got beat frequently. Well, last you, year. Need, you need to think about our hardest games this year at USC, at Washington. What do they do? They throw the ball deep every single drive. They are targeting over the top, it's their favorite location. So we need to find out a way to be able to mitigate that a little bit because if we continue being 87, 90th an explosive pass defense we're, we're gonna give up a lot of touchdowns to some of our stiffest competition in the pack this year we well, saw it last year versus USC where um we got beat routinely from deep balls. yes 
our safeties look lost out there. Exactly. Our run defense was great. Short pass was even great. It was just when they got to that last level of the defense, they'd get separation and over the top, we didn't have anyone there. Yeah, yeah. We, we're not, we didn't have the athleticism to compete. So I'm hoping Cole Bishop, um, I'm hoping um, Sione Vaki, mm-hmm. see what Nate Ritchie can do, come back from the yeah. mission. Maybe his mission legs are a little still there. Yeah, maybe Jonathan Hall as a true freshman contributes. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. Um, yeah, but I'm sure that that will be a point of emphasis for the coaches. That's something I'm interested to see in the spring mm-hmm. because – Utah's offense doesn't really get the deep ball, so like we don't have much to practice against. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. that they put that as an make that an emphasis and fix that area. Yeah. Of concern. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's go into um. Kind of you know our confidence out of ten as far as each position group. What would you rank your confidence out of ten as far as for the me? Go? For me personally, I'm I'm really concerned about that strong versus free safety dynamic that we have and that lack of over the top protection. I do like our corners, but we did lose Clark. Overall, for me, I'm going to go with a 5 out of 10 for defensive backs. I think there's potential there, and there could be a lot of upside. But I also I don't see a quick or easy fix for that over-the-top defense problem. I just don't really see a path that we improve significantly there this year. What about you, Ethan? So I'm a little bit higher on our corners this year. I'm a firm believer in Miles Bat- Battle and Zemaya Vaughn. Um, I even think Theo Johnson could play a big role just with his athleticism. Mm-hmm. He looked awesome. I'd love that. Um, but I do have those same concerns with our mm-hmm. safeties. It's just it's hard to overlook. I'm going to give us a solid 7 out of 10. Mm-hmm. I think our corners this year could really make some explosive plays and really um, really help our that, that, that secondary improve. But if our safety room is – still as questionable as it is, mm-hmm. it does kind of put some hinder on that. And it's not that they're bad players. No, I don't want to interject too much when we're giving rankings. It's just that they're strong safeties. They play close to the line. They make tackles. They come inwards. They don't drop back in deep coverage, really. Well, Cole Bishop is going to be one of the best strong safeties in the country. They're some of our leading tacklers with Sione Vaki and Cole Bishop. Yeah, but they're not they're not coverage guys. So, yeah, it's more of a scheme thing because the, the players are they're great players. Yeah, I, I'm going to go a 6 out of 10. I have similar concerns. I do hope that we improve. I think there is a pathway to be better than we were last year. But I think that it's going to be tough. Because obviously we lost Clark Phillips, who was one of the best corners in our program's history. Mm-hmm. Um, third round draft pick to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, yeah, so losing that is a big blow, I think. Because that was... Because Clark Phillips basically took out an entire receiver yeah. where you could focus on other people. It was almost like Revis Island out there. Exactly. You know, um, I don't think we have that kind of lockdown defender on the team this year. But I do think maybe with Miles Battle, you know, and some depth coming back that we could be a little deeper than we were last year. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next position group. The big boys on the, on the on D-line. The defensive the line. D-line. Okay, sure we get um, Logan Fano. In yeah, I'll, I'll start us off on this. I think the D-line should be better than last year. I agree. I think with uh, Junior Tafuna and uh, Peppa in the middle, along with O'Toole and Jonah Ellis on the edges, uh, we're in for a pretty strong group. Um, I'm sure Van, G- Van Fillinger and Chase Kennedy will factor in there as well. Um, I'm not sure they're the starters right away, but they'll definitely get on the field. Mm-hmm. I feel pretty good about the D-line. I think that while maybe not elite, like some Utah D-lines have been, they should be well above average, into the great range. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Towards the end of last season, the D-line really started coming into form, and I think that's going to carry over into the offseason, and we're going to come back, pick right up where we left off, and even improve off of that. Because we have players like Logan Fano now, and then more time of development for people like Van Fillinger, Peppa, O'Toole, Junior Tafuna. So that's I think... Cool. Yeah, let's scroll down and see. I think that I think we're gonna have a really strong group here. Because yeah, there's just there's a lot of guys here. Vamahi had a solid season last year. Yeah. yeah. And you you can see we're deep. We have a lot of we're guys. A lot of guys that can factor in. Very, very deep at that Jonah position. Jonah Lee well. was pretty good too. Yeah. And this is where like the experience and the and the years in the power five really start to uh to add up for Utah. They were able to get the big boys in the trenches that can battle and have mm-hmm. the people that can come in and battle even again. That's what hurts. That's what hurt us in the beginning. Yeah. We just weren't as physical. We weren't physical enough mm-hmm. and to, to 
fight with these guys. But as you've seen the last few years, it has improved greatly. People that go out, some guys come in next man up, and they they outshine mm -hmm. the, the, the previous starter. It seems like we always find guys on the defensive exactly. line. Yeah, and while we don't have maybe that one superstar akin to a Lecky Fotu or a Nate Orchard, we still have an incredibly deep line with a ton of options, and we can kind of you know switch out based on different looks. You know, if we want speed off the edge, we can kind of go you know Chase Kennedy and Connor O'Toole. You know, if we want more size, we can go Van Fillinger. So we have a lot of different optionality there, and so I think that the D line is in a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Morgan Scally. He's a wizard defensively. He gets these guys. He gets the most out of them on the defensive yes. side of the ball. Like these guys will reach their potential this year. He's going to put them in a position with defensive scheme wise that they're going to be able to succeed. Yeah. Um, if we're looking at our rankings based on pick six previews, we were 18th in rushing defense, 59th in yards per carry, 9th in negative play percentage, mm -hmm. and 98th in explosive rush. So basically the numbers you see there is our rushing defense was solid overall, but we did give up too many gap plays. So hopefully, you know, in conjunction with the linebackers, they can stop those yeah. gap plays and continue to be elite at negative play percentage and rushing defense in general. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we just like we talked about with the uh, corners, we're playing against some of the best uh, mobile quarterbacks in the country in Michael Penix, uh, Caleb Williams, Bo, Bo Nicks, Nicks. Mm -hmm. guys like that. And maybe DJ Longley and uh, Schroeder, uh, Sanders, those guys can move, you know? And so if we can get pressure on those quarterbacks and cause them to make problems, that's going to be – they're going to help that secondary that we're not so high on. Yeah. And so I think this defensive defensive line, especially guys like a Pepe and Tafuna, could really have a standout year this year. Yeah, a good D-line and good pressure on the QB makes the coverage look a lot exactly. better. No mm -hmm. corners are going to look good if they have to cover for four, five, six seconds every single play. Mm -hmm. You know, um, just no one's going to look good. Even the best corners are not going to look good in that coverage. So, yeah, let's move into our confidence on a scale of 1 to 10. What about you, Landon? For me, hmm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go an eight. I like where the defensive line is heading. I was going back and forth between seven and eight, but I feel like seven is a little too low for the potential upside I see for this group. So I'm gonna go a solid eight here. I like what we have going on. I like these guys, and I think they're gonna have a big year. I'm gonna stick with eight as well. I kind of just to add on to your points. We don't like Tanner said before previously. We don't have that star. I'd love to see that someone kind of. Um, breakout this year and kind of like, all right, this guy, this guy's him. Um, you can see that from hopefully maybe Connor O'Toole, Van Fillinger, Junior Tafuna kind of just continue to improve throughout their junior year. It'll be kind of fun to see. Yeah, I'm actually going to go a nine out of 10. Mm. I think that the depth pushes it up from an eight for me. There are okay. so many options and so many people that have a chance to break out that I do feel like we are going to see you know, at least a little bit of a breakout season, I think, for the mm -hmm. team line. Um, this is the time where they've had multiple years in the program. This is the time where the coaches have seen the issues we had last year, and they're going to be laser focused on fixing those issues. And so I'm going to go a nine here. I think that I'm pretty, pretty confident in what I like it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident what this group is going to be. Okay, let's move on to the next group. Um, before we go, um, well, I guess for next group, I, I do want to talk about kickers real quick. We got a transfer from Colorado, Cole Becker. Yeah. Who uh, looks like he's pretty great. Um, I just hope we get a guy that can kick it out of the end zone. At yeah. That point. I think the cheer in Rice Eccles would be huge <laughs> if we got a touchback this year. Oh, wow. So, yeah, let's pray for good kickers <laughs> to get back to Utah's yeah. long tradition of elite special teams. Mm hmm. Okay. Like, I think let's, we can yeah, have the linebacker on. now. Sweet. Linebackers. This is. One of the positions I'm highest on, certainly. I think that Lander Barton is a superstar in the making. Mm -hmm. I think I agree. Yeah. I think that um Karene Reed is incredibly solid. Lavani Dumuni, our transfer mm. from Stanford, was their leading tackler. And I think he is he's not on here. An inc oh, he's not on there yet. Right. I think he is an incredible addition um to the core. I think that we have so many options and the options that will play a lot are pretty elite. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to just echo those same points. I'm a Lander Barton believer all the way. I think he's going to win Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year this year. Well, I, I, think, I like that. I, could I see think it. he'll have a season akin to Devin Lloyd's last season this year. 
I think he's ready. Pretty incredible. I think he's ready, honestly. I love him in pass rush. I love him even in pass protection. He has a good feel for covering. And then he's just a ball hawk. He makes tackles. He's big. He's strong. He's athletic. He's everything you want in a linebacker. Well, and to go to add on again, the depth in the linebacker position is great. You saw a lot of play from Josh Calvert last year. He played well. Cranny Reed, Lander Barr, and Justin Medlock, a redshirt freshman. He looked really good in the spring game. The dude's big. He's fast. He can make great plays. Um, Dumani from uh, from Stanford. Mm-hmm. Dude, I love that pickup. Absolutely great. love it. In yeah. Utah, the last few years, they have kind of relied on some linebacker transfer from the transfer portal, and it's, it's worked out pretty well for us. So I'm hoping that it continues that way. Um, I'm really excited to see what uh, Lander Barn can do. I, mm-hmm. I, I agree. The dude can have – if he can have a stand out year, I think that is pinnacle for Utah defensive this year. I yeah. think he's the most important player on the defensive side. If he can, can shine – Utah is going to be successful. To me, this is probably our strongest position. Definitely. I think Utah's linebackers will be the strength of their team. I think that we can expect insane production. Yes. I think we can expect, you know, um, a step forward from what we had last year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm just really, really excited about the future of this position. And I think Same. they're going to be, you know, they're going to wreak havoc. They're going to get sacks. Mm-hmm. They're going to get stuffs at the line of scrimmage. They're going to get interceptions. We really have such a deep, versatile group that I think is going to be one of the premier groups in the country as far as linebackers yeah. go. Something interesting to me is in 2019, obviously we had the best defense we'd ever had. Devin Lloyd was someone that was on that but also stayed, and I feel like he's passed down that culture of that defense in our linebacker room since 2019. I agree. He's That's one of the only positions that still had people left over because basically everyone got drafted in 2019 because <laughs> they were that good. They've passed down – like that 2019 Utah feel in the linebacker room. I agree. Which, that's why I'm so high on the linebackers. Okay, yeah, let's go right into our rankings. What about you, Landon? I'm going to give this, hmm, I'm going to go 10 out of 10 on this. Yeah. I think this is our best defensive position. I yes. think if this isn't a 10 out of 10, then really nothing is. Yeah, I'm going 10 out of 10 on the confidence scale. This is the by far the position I'm least worried about. Yeah. And so, yeah, 10 out of 10 on the confidence scale. Mm-hmm. I'm like very, very, very confident. I'm not worried about linebackers. Yeah, so that um, so that concludes kind of the defensive groups. What would you guys give the defense as a whole on your confidence ranking? Let's talk about that mm-hmm. for a little bit. So just a quick recap. I had five on defensive backs, eight on defensive line, and a 10 on linebackers. I would say that puts my confidence somewhere... Somewhere in the 7.5 to 8 scale. I'm going to go 7.5. I like our defense. I think we have upside. But at the same time, we're playing some premier offenses. We lost Clark Phillips, our best defender. I wouldn't be that shocked if we were a little under what people think we could be. But at the same time, I think that our top level upside is like a 9.5 to a 10 defense. Honestly. Yeah. What do you think, Ethan? <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty big on these guys. I have always had confidence in Morgan Scalley to bring a bring yeah. a defense uh together. You know, if the start of the year like last year, we had some people that were struggling and we switched them out and they kinda and we kinda we kinda changed the, the format and the the eyes of what the defense uh could be. Um this first seven um I think the first seven games of the season we were like forty fifth in out of like sixty nine packed Pack five team, power, power five, five teams. teams, and and then the last seven we are in the top twenty, and so it's just one of those things where if the right players play, the best players are going to play in Utah. I'm confident in that, and I think my skill would probably be about an eight, eight and a half. Honestly, mm-hmm. I'm really yeah. big on the corners, really big on the uh, the linebackers, like Landon, like Landon said. Um, yeah, eight and yeah, half. yeah. I am doing a seven and a half. I'm going with what Landon did as well. Um, I think that there's potential to be a lot higher than that but like Landon said the offenses we play are just so elite this year yeah that it wouldn't really surprise me and I don't even think it would necessarily be bad defense if Washington or Oregon scored 40 points I don't even think it would necessarily be bad defense I just think that those offenses are so good that you know we're going to get beat sometimes and especially with a lot of top teams in the Pac-12 having an elite passing attack and our passing attack kind of being our passing defense kind of being what we see as kind of a weakness. Um, yeah, I'm going to go seven and a half. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to defense here or offense. I mean, starting off really strong with the offensive line, I think all of us are going to have 
quite a bit to say about this position group, and I think that we're all going to be pretty high. Yeah, this is my most confident position on the offensive side. I think that we are really strong up front. We've mm-hmm. recruited that position well. I think Jim Harding is one of our best position coaches for the offensive line. Um, obviously, we have a lot of returners, and we also have players that could factor in right away, like Spencer Fano. Yeah. He could fan- uh, factor into the offensive line right away. You know, obviously, you know, Jared and Kump, um, a lot of other different players that are there that we could, um, yeah, have be really good right away. Yeah, I for me, this is the position group that I am highest on of any position group on the entire team, offense or defense. I absolutely love what we have going on at offensive line. We are returning a lot of experienced, high quality producing players at the power five level and adding in new recruits that only increase that ceiling. Like Spencer Fano, he's he's a dog. He's going to be good. I can just, I don't know. I just have a good feeling about him. And then I just, I love our depth as well. We have so many guys on the O-line right here. Yeah, that, yeah, that. Uh, will factor into it. Johnny Maia, Michael Mokafisi, Keaton Bills, Spencer Fano. All of these guys are good. Yeah, they're all really good players. Like all of these guys are, dare I say, elite power five offensive linemen. Yeah. We Obviously, should be, we yeah. have two guys we're replacing next year that were awesome for us in Paul Mele and, and Braden Daniels. Obviously, obviously Braden Daniels getting a, going to the NFL. Um well, I wouldn't be surprised to see these these three guys next year in Keaton Bills, um, Michael Mukafisi, and guys like that heading into the NFL as well. Yeah. These guys are awesome. Um, Johnny Maia as well. I'm excited to see what these guys can do. Um, I, I'm i very confident in these the big boys in, up front. Yeah. yeah. Kind of put the tone for offense. Yeah. Utah exactly. last year was one of the only teams, was one of two teams in the top 15 in both uh run block and pass block and so i think that that should continue we should be in the top 15 of both of those stats again mm-hmm. this year and so let's go right into our rankings of confidence what do you think Lane? for me i'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 for me i'm extremely confident in our offensive line i don't see a scenario where we're where we're a below average offensive line i just don't think that's a possibility for us this year and i think that paired with a strong run game which is jumping ahead a little bit but I think our offensive line is going to be maybe the greatest asset for our team this year. I'm going to give us a 9 out of 10. I'm still really, really high on them. But I think re- replacing Braden Daniels mm-hmm. and Paul Mayer My- yeah. will, be, will be difficult. Um, but I have all the confidence in the world in, in uh, Jim Harding and, and, the, and the group. I think uh, Spencer Fano is coming in. Um, retro, no, not even a retro, sorry. A freshman coming in and really could play right away. Maybe. Play right yeah. away. So I'm in the spring game. He looked really good. Looked massive yes i mean he's got six five size 300 pounds plus already and so give him give him another year to do it's going to be a freak i'm excited i think nine out of ten um but could really jump up to be the best thing about all of your tough football this year yeah i'm going nine out of ten as well um the only reason it's not a ten out of ten is because we did lose some really good players Mm -hmm. um and you obviously have to see how it works before you can give a ten out of ten in my opinion and so i'm giving a nine out of ten and so i think it's really strong group yeah Okay, let's move on to the next group. So we so QB group. punter Bowmeister, we're we're fine. Yeah, we're fine with the punter. <laughs> as, long, okay. as long as it doesn't get blocked. Yeah, as long year. as he can get it off his foot. Okay, so obviously starting off with the quarterbacks, we have Cam Rising. Um, Brandon Rose is as of now the QB two um, in the competition with Bryson Barnes and Nate Johnson. Uh, Mac Howard as a true freshman coming in. I don't think we really expect to see him play this year, but he's a very, very quality QB5 to have depth this year. So how do you guys feel about the QB room? Um, obviously, we got to have all, all, all the confidence in the world in camera rising. Probably the best quarterback in Utah history. Two-time Pac-12 mm-hmm. champion. All, he's, he's the reason why we're here at this point right now talking about it. Um, obviously, the concerns with his health are big coming off the ACL tear. Um, who knows what could happen with that? Is he going to be 100% healthy by week one? By mm-hmm. fall, we don't know. Um, but I see a lot of excellent um, and players behind him as well. Um, watching Brandon Rose at that spring game, the dude looked like he knew how to run an offense. He can see he, his eyes were always downfield. He looked pretty mobile. His throw is his his spiral is really tight. It's really good. And then obviously 
We saw some Nate Johnson last year. The dude is electric. Yeah. I'd love to see him get into, get into offense a little bit. Um, Maybe outside in the slot, maybe getting some wildcat again. It would be fun to see. Um, mm-hmm. I'm really high on the on the quarterbacks this year. Obviously, yeah. Cam Rising gives a ten out of ten, and but the backups with the backups, I probably give us a solid solid nine. Yeah. So for me, if we were able to know to what level Cam is going to be healthy and back to his usual self, I'd be a lot more confident in predicting this quarterback room. I like Brandon Rose behind him, but still untested. I love Nate Johnson, but. His passing has looked kind of shaky. And then Bryson Barnes is Bryson Barnes. You know what you're going to get from him. You'd probably, if he started, we'd probably go like seven and five. Six and six. Six six and and six. Probably. The Milford Maniac, man. The dude's awesome. It's like he's not a bad player per se. I just, the upside isn't there as much for us to compete like we want to. Well, I'll always love Bryson Barnes. Mm -hmm. He came into the rules, both through a touchdown. He kept us in the game. The dude has part. But, you know, there's a reason why guys like Brandon Rose have come up as a as retro freshman and took a spot. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just, not, yeah. he's just not he's not a guy that can, can really save us. So I'm hoping yeah, exactly. Cam is healthy. Yeah, if Cam Rising was healthy, this would probably be a 9 or a 10 uh, for me on the confidence scale. I'm obviously with Rising tearing his ACL, which is a pretty significant injury, obviously. Um, Brandon Rose being the backup. Uh, Nate Johnson maybe being thrown in into a few different packages, you know, Wildcat packages. Um, and Bryson Barnes kind of being the safety valve there. I'd probably go, I'm going to go, I think, a 7 out of 10, just with Rising's health being a huge factor, um, Brandon Rose being untested, Bryson Barnes maybe not having the highest ceiling, and kind of Nate Johnson and Matt Howard still being a little raw. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go 7 out of 10. For me, I'm going to go 8 out of 10. I do think Cam will be healthy when the season comes around. Medical care has gotten better. People are healing from ACLs faster than ever and better than ever, coming back stronger. I think Cam is going to be ready at the beginning of the season. And I think that as the season goes on, we'll see him get back right to the level where he was running as well. So I'm going to go 8 out of 10 for me. Did you do your confidence level, Ethan? Yeah, I, uh, I think if Bryce – not sorry, Bryce. If Cam Rising is healthy, I have all the confidence in the world. Today. Yeah. He's shown it day in and day out. If Cam Rising is healthy and he's 100%, I give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah. But with that being said, we are not 100% sure. So I'm going to give him an 8. Um, just to kind of talk about real quick with how the world is right now with it when it comes to like injuries. A guy named like Bryce Harper, baseball player, he tore his UCL, which is in your arm, came back the fastest ever in recorded history and came out and mm. played great. So if, if Cam Rising tore his ACL with the medical history of the world right now and how fast everything can be fixed, I wouldn't be surprised if he's healthy day one. Yeah, and it's like... like, We've seen seen people make those medical mm -hmm. miracles. He can do that. I don't know if any of you guys watched the video of the Pac-12 media days. It's like, obviously, Cam doesn't need a big old brace at media days. But, like, he was running around playing pickleball, jumping up and down. He It didn't... It wasn't even mentioned. Obviously, no limping whatsoever, no brace whatsoever, completely moving around freely. That gives me a lot of confidence because we're still a little ways out from the season. And if it already is to the point where it's like he doesn't need a brace or even to think about it, I feel like he's going to be ready to play. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's move on to the next position group. I'm excited. I think the running back room is going to be one of the funnest um, groups to talk about. We have a lot of great guys and a lot of people coming in that can Stacked. be awesome. Um, obviously, we saw an awesome – uh, res- not resurgence, but a change from Jaquinn and Jackson last year from quarterback to running back. The start of, the, the start of that experiment was a little iffy, had some problems kept, uh, protecting the ball. He was running straight up. Yeah, yeah that was that was what I noticed is he was really high up on his center mm-hmm. of gravity. You know, he was like a quarterback. Quarterback's got to be poised and got to be high up so he can see over the line and can make his reads. But running back, you really got to get low. You got to get your center of gravity low so you can run people over. And I think he did a good job um, of fi- kind of fixing that when oh, he yeah. switched over. When he um, when he went low, he dropped that shoulder. He looked mm-hmm. amazing. He has some very great finesse moves with his spin. I'm really excited to see what Jaquin and Jax can do. We also got re- returning Micah, Micah Bernard. He looked awesome as well last year. Really good pass catching running back. Um, he gives us a lot of versatility, especially with the one-two punch of Micah and Jaquindon. 
It's going to be really fun to see. Yeah, we know what we're getting with uh, Mackay Bernard. We know that he's kind of the Swiss Army knife, you know, Mm -hmm. incredible in pass protection, incredible receiver, and can run the ball as well. Um, Who he reminds me of a lot is Tony Pollard for the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, You know, kind of like a do-it-all back that um, Mm -hmm. can do everything. Explosive. He's a playmaker. Oh, he reminds you a lot of, talking about Utah running backs, Devontae Booker. Yeah, I love yeah. Yeah, Devontae Booker. Booker too. was so good. He was amazing. <laughs> I haven't thought of Tony him for Paul, a while. Tony Pollard is an excellent comp. I think Jaquinta Jackson reminds me a lot of guys that, um, if we're talking about Utah running backs, he reminds me a lot of uh, Matt Asiata. He's mm. a power back that was quick and was really able to like put his shoulder down and make some make some mm-hmm. pressure. Yeah, I love our running back room this year. I think Jaquindon, he already started to have a breakout season at the end of last year. I think he's going to have an incredible season. He'll be in the conversation of best running backs in college football. Maybe not like number one, but I think he'll be in that conversation if people are listing their top five, top ten. Absolutely love his athleticism. He's so hard to bring down. Even at 6'2 with that size, he's running through people at the end of the year. Yeah. They couldn't get an arm on him. It was insane. Yeah, so I, I am yeah. so excited to see how that plays out. And then, I mean, think of the absolutely filthy trick play packages. This guy used to be a quarterback. I mean, he could throw the ball. <laughs> he yeah. could throw. Yeah. If we don't have at least one of those plays, I'll be incredibly disappointed. Yes. Agreed. But, um, yeah, I think that this um, no one running back here is going to have completely overwhelming stats yes. unless JJ just completely takes the reins and runs for a 100 yards game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be kind of by committee. Obviously, Jaquindon and Mike, Mikai Bernard are going to be the top two options. But I think Glover and Chris Curry are going to factor. They'll in have a role well. too. I guarantee they'll have it. a role. Five or six carries. Chris a Chris Curry yeah. was playing really well last year until he got injured. He yeah, was yeah. honestly breaking out a little bit. Oh, yeah, I, would I have expected yeah. him to play starting at starter minutes before yeah, he got injured. He looked yeah. really, really good. I do think that injury will probably bring him into more of like a backup or a reserve role along with Jalen Glover. But I do think that they'll factor heavily. One hundred percent. And running backs are one of the positions that gets injured the most frequently. Yeah, you I mean, need some depth. Which we, we saw Mackay Bernard get injured. I mean, he was basically hobbling towards the end of last year because yeah. he was so injured. So, I mean, don't be surprised if these guys get a lot of carries. And then just to kind of talk about some more depth, we got two incoming four-star recruits in Mike Mitchell and Deion Stanley. Watching Mike Mitchell's tape in high school, he looked incredible. He's a huge, big power back, and dude was quick. Um, I didn't see a lot of Deion Stanley, but I think he was a lot. He was just very versatile. I've watched well. his highlights. He looks great. He's incredible. He's he kind of awesome. in the Michael Bernard role where he's incredibly fast, can catch passes, and he's just going to be a burner. Yeah, both of these guys look extremely talented. Dijon Stanley is one of the fastest track runners in all of California. And so he'll be – I think there's a, ch- there's a legitimate chance that he's fast enough that he may switch to slot receiver. Like, wow. he, has that kind, like he has that kind of speed. I'd awesome absolutely speed. love yeah. that. And then again, like it's obviously these guys are probably not going to be a lot of room. We have a lot of great running backs right now with Chris Curry, Jaquindon, Micah, or Makai. Sorry, I always it's always a different name for me every time. I think they had an interview and he says he goes by both. Okay, yeah, so, so and he says he's been called both yeah. in his interview. And yeah. so I'm excited to see what those guys can do in the ne- in the coming years. So watch out for them. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Let's go into our confidence rankings. For me, I am going to go a nine out of ten. I just love the depth here. And while we may not have like the true, true superstar, I think that JJ has the potential to be that. So if, if JJ really breaks out like that, I'm going 10 out of 10, but I'm going 9 out of 10 for now. For me, I'll give my ranking. I foreshadowed it a little bit with the O-line. I said the O-line, it correlates with the run game. I'm going to go a 10 out of 10 for running backs. Tanner's of the opinion that if we have a breakout, I think we already have had a breakout. I think I think JJ already is a super. And I totally I totally can see that yeah. perspective. For sure. I already to me I feel like I've seen enough. I think he's a superstar running back already. Which is funny because I was way higher on him last year and you were down on him. And then now I, we've, well now I'm still thing. super high. I'm yeah. a freaking nine out of ten. Yeah. It's not like I'm low. On. Hater. <laughs> yeah, but um, it, yeah, it's just funny that switch yes. because you are not a believer. You at are not a believer. Quarterback, I hated him at that position. Every time he got the ball, he was fumbling in the red zone. He was slipping and falling. It just—it was a nightmare. I was—I didn't want him to ever touch the ball again. I won't lie. Really I, I was a hater. I was a hater on this man, but he's completely proved me wrong. He's changed my mind, and I couldn't be happier that he's changed my mind. Yeah, exactly. He's now one of my favorite players on the team, and he needs to be involved in every single play. I'm actually going to go at eight out of ten here. I'm confident in them. My only con- my biggest concern is this. We have a hater here, boys. <laughs> 
can they stay healthy? Because I think Mike, Micah has had injury concerns. I yeah. think Jaquindon earlier in his career had some concerns with injury. I'm not sure. Um, I think that could Chris be – Chris Curry, obviously. Towards Chris the Curry. Yeah. Um, so there is some concern right there. Um, obviously, like Tanner said, running backs are going to be your most hostile position. It's, you're you're going to get, get beat injured. Up. You're yeah. going to get injured. There's a reason why the NFL – They're getting wrecked in there. Yeah, there's a reason why the NFL is all talking about it right now. Why they won't pay running backs because – you can just get a guy at replacement level, yeah. you know? And so there's a reason for that. With that being said, everyone can stay healthy. This is going to be one of the best in the, yeah. pack, in the pack. So watch out for that. But I have that concern. Gotcha. I think going to the tight so, end. So what room, was your ranking? Oh, my You friend, didn't give a ranking. Eight out, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You, I think you did, but I missed it. It's all good. Okay. So now we're going into the tight end, tight end room, room, which – you know, when your top two is Keithy and Yasmin, I'm really not that worried, you know? Mm, agreed. I mean, Keithy is going to be the number one guy getting targets on the entire team. He's going to finish with the most catches. He's going to finish with the most yards. And he's going to finish with the most TDs. Unless something truly unprecedented happens, I think that that is pretty much locked. Um, Keithy, I think people forget how good he was and that mm-hmm. he would better than Kincaid. Yes, he started you know? over Kincaid and yeah. he performed at that level. And so, like, would I be surprised to see him exceed Kincaid's numbers from last year? Not really. Not I think I, I think that's well yeah. within the realm of possibility. Well, before, like, when um, Brent Keithy went down last year, Andy Lugwood was asked, like, what the significance of that was. Mm-hmm. He said, our offense was run through Brent Keithy. Yes. This is a guy, when you had a guy like Micah Bernard, you had Tavion Thomas who had 21 touchdowns the year prior. Yeah. You had Dalton Kincaid. Cam Rising. Cam Rising. Um, Brant Keithy is the most important player on the field at all times for the Utes. When you comes. have to have him found. You know, you have to know where he is at all times. You know, if you if you think the dude has George Kittle, Travis Kelsey type type plays, the mm. dude is incredible. Watch the Oregon Championship game. The dude can't get tackled. Yeah, now let's yes. hand it over to the biggest Grant Brent Keith yeah. enjoyer. Since the first us. catch he ever made, his first play, I think his first play was like a 40-yard run where he broke three tackles and shoots <laughs> him out. He said, who is Brother Kuthi? <laughs> said, who the Does hell? He had BR yes. on the back. That was when his brother actually played on the team. His brother used to play. And I said, who the hell is this guy? He said, where, where did he come from? Where did we find this five-star? The best star I've ever seen in my life after one play. <laughs> and he's never let me down since then. He always gets a first down. My life on the line, if I need one man to drag three people into the end zone from five yards out, it's without Keithy. a thought, Keithy, not even worried. I don't even need to watch. I know it's going to happen. I just, I'm so confident in this man. He will not be denied from the end zone. He catches everything. I just, I don't know. I am so high on this man, Brant Keithy. He definitely, I mean, just by Brant being in the tight end room, I'm already going to give it a 10 because he's the best tight end in college football. Easily, I'd say. So, and I let's go into the blocking. He's even a great blocker. Even at 6'2", he doesn't have the traditional tight end size. Kayvon Thibodeau got shut down one-on-one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going 10 out of 10. This would be the best tight end room for – most of the best tight end room ever for most programs in the country. So yeah. I'm going with that. I'm going to say, I'm going to give us an eight again. Grant Keith is coming off an ACL. He's injured. He's had Out. like two years to recover though. ACLs are ACLs, bro. Like we talked with Cam. It's hard, it's, it's hard to recover from those. The dude requires a lot of his, his he, the lateral movement is really big in Brant Keith's yeah. game. And then outside of Brant, I, I love I love me some Thomas Yasmin. The dude is a train, but the dude can't catch saves live. We talked he's, about it he's before. a boomer bus player. It's either the worst play you've ever seen or the best play you've ever seen. And so, but outside of those two, I'm not very confident in who we who we have. Well, I but think, do you need more than two tight ends? I mean, look at how many do you need? How many do you need? There's Agreed. only like yes. one or two on the field at a time. Well, yes. Well, yeah, with how Utah's run their run their program you've got you had guys with you had cole fotheringham grant keithy dalton kincaid on the field you had logan kendall thomas yasmin dalton kincaid on the field i'm not saying like our tight ends aren't going to be bad but outside of thomas yasmin and brent keithy i do not i, I don't know much about them so i'm hoping yeah. it works out and i'm my well, only real reason is brent is coming off the acl that's yeah. why i give him the eight but if brent keithy is 100 healthy again one of the best tight rooms in the country we also we gotta talk about one guy at Georgia 
he can give Grant his run for money. Brock Brock Bowers. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, we know who he is. Don't don't come at us for that. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the receivers now. I'll take I'll, I'll take Brent Keithy over him. Yes, <laughs> this is um a position that I don't feel confident in. Um, we have Vele coming back. We obviously um got in a transfer with uh, Micah Pittman um from Florida State, and he played for Oregon as well. We and have, Emory Simmons from Indiana. Emory Simmons from Indiana, their number two receiver. Um, we have Muddy Parks. We have Makai Cope. Um, we have um, Munir McLean, who switched from a tight end to a receiver mm-hmm. this year. But overall, I'm just not high on this group. We've been mm-hmm. – what has been the offseason talk for the last five years at Utah? Oh, the receivers have to step up. The receivers have to step up. They have to get open. We have to have a deep passing game. And we just – we it never happened. We don't have a deep they, passing game. We never really have improved at this position significantly for like five years. Everything else yeah. has gotten better. Our, this is kind of trailed. Yeah, the only like really elite receiver we had was like Darren Carrington. And that was a while ago. It was a one year. And that was a one year. And so basically from Oregon. Yeah. And if you look at pick six previews, everything on our offense is elite to great besides explosive pass. We're 88th in the country in explosive pass. We just don't have a deep threat. We don't throw deep. It's just not our offense, but we need that to really be a well-rounded team. Um, and I don't know if that's partially yeah. due to scheme. Are we not calling the right plays? Are we not putting these guys in positions to succeed? That could be a part of this equation. Yeah, we don't want to put it all on the receivers because play calling does affect the receivers yes. as well. Yeah. Like, I love Devon Bailey. I love his story. The dude's awesome. Walk on to, to the number one guy on, a, on the wide receiver room. Awesome to see. But, man, we need a – Come on, please. Oh, it got it pulled this up. So. <gasps> no way. Okay, okay welcome back, everyone. <laughs> We're sorry, guys. Our uh, laptop died, so we are restarting this from here. We'll probably have a little gap that we'll need to cut out in the middle there. But mm-hmm. yeah, we are back. We are talking about the receivers. Um, yeah. So as far as receivers goes, yeah, I love Vele. I cannot stand when we throw that wheel or that fade route along <laughs> the sideline. <laughs> We do that like three times play. a game, and it's it never works. You might as well just spike it. And even if it does work, it's what eight yards. Yeah, and so it's a six yard upside. I love Vele. I don't think he's a true number one receiver. I don't think he can really separate from DBs. He doesn't have that kind of speed. Um, yeah, I think we're still searching for that breakout guy. Maybe it's Money Parks. Maybe, maybe it's, it's Makai Cope. Maybe it's Micah Pittman. Yeah, Pittman. maybe it's Micah Pittman. Maybe I it's like Emory Micah Pittman Simmons. A lot. Maybe it's Emory Simmons from Indiana. Maybe it's a zip, Zipperer, um, our new recruit that we got. Um, yeah, so I this is just – I'm not high on this group. Everyone can say a breakout is going to happen. Everyone can say they're going to be better. But until I actually see it, I'm just – I just don't believe that. Someone I like to – I want to kind of – highlight real quick is um makai cope the dude has some really great hands we saw in the 2022 spring game where cam Risen threw a pass up to him he went up there caught it one-handed it was really in the rain it was really elite it was really cool to see um he's had some moments in the games where he sh- he's able to shine um he was a freshman last year so not a lot of snaps um but i would love to see a breakout year for him I l- i've always liked him i love makai cope number 11 it's it's kind of it's just it w- works out perfectly and then one person I also want to uh, highlight as well is Mikey Matthews, um, freshman. You're coming. a Mikey Matthews believer. I love the dude. 
I'm watching, a too. watching his tape in those seven on sevens going against the SEC good. corners and absolutely cooking them. He dropped two five stars to four stars, and he jumped from a four star, <laughs> to a low four star, to a damn near five star with that with that seven on seven on for twenty four seven sports. Um, so I really, really, I'm a firm believer in him. Five eight, the dude can run. He's like probably the perfect prototype wide receiver type build. Maybe a little taller. Um, Maybe Covey 2.0. That's what yeah. Witt said. Witt compared him to Covey. Which I like that would be lot. awesome. And you know, yeah. Britton Covey, elite. And I love, I don't know why, but number zero on a slot receiver it's sick. looks it's dangerous. Good. Yeah. So overall, I think for this position group, we have some solid options. No one that really is a top tier receiver. We have some average options, a lot of average options, and some decent options. So I'm probably going to go, as far as confidence, probably a 3 out of 10. It's not high for me. For me, I'm going to go a 5 out of 10. I do like the Micah Pittman transfer, but I don't know. It's just hard for me to say again, oh, this is so-and-so's breakout year. It's kind of an obscure yeah. reference here, but Game of Zones, when LeBron was in Cleveland, there's a new king in the East. There's a new, new king, king in the, the East. East. And it's Every like year. seven years of that. It's That's kind of how I feel. I just, there's a new breakout receiver. Yeah. I feel the same. I just cannot predict a breakout when we've been predicting that for years and it just never has happened. Yeah. No. What about I'm you, a Aiden? little bit more confident just because I know what they're asked to do and I think they can be really good at what they're asked to do. Frank Keithy is going to be the guy that's getting the ball. Yeah, he will have the most targets, Keithy. Keithy so. Michael Bernard is going to be the guy that gets the ball. Quentin Jackson is the guy to go. These guys are going to be the third, fourth option, even our number one, whoever that's going to be this year. Um. With that being said, I'll probably give him a solid five. You know, I hope, I hope that they change my mind and they Me become, as well. they yeah. become one of our strongest positions because they have the potential. Let's be real. There's a lot of guys here that could really that could have there, that breakout. There, there is. I just yeah. But you, I agree. But you can't trust it. I would love nothing bad. more than to come back to this after week two. And our receivers have dominated at Florida and at Baylor. I would love nothing more than to come back into Eat Crow on this podcast exactly. about how good our receivers are. I would love that. That would be my ideal. Yeah. You know, I would love for every single position group to, you know, if I didn't rank you a 10 out of 10, to use that as motivation. Exactly. To get your stats up, you know, get yeah. your impact up. You know, it'll be, it'll be so much fun to see. I, I hope they prove us wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next up, we are each going to choose an offensive and defensive X factor. And so we're going to try to not overlap here. So uh-huh. if someone chooses one that you were thinking of, maybe switch to another one. Yeah. Um, just to highlight a few players that we're really high on and that we think could be. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start out with yeah. defensive? Yeah, let's start it with, let's just go with the defensive one. For me, I'm taking the low hanging fruit, Lander Barton. I said it before during that, I think he will win Pac 12 Defensive Player of the Year. I think in the pass rush, he's going to be absolutely lethal. He's going to have that Devin Lloyd coming off the edge, coming up the middle. He's violent. He's physical. He's, he's going to get sacks. He's going to get tackles. He's going to get takeaways. He's the X factor for me on defense. More in just a sense of he's good. He's going to dominate, and his impact is going to be incredible. Yeah, for me here, I am probably going to go Connor O'Toole. Mm, I think that 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 speed off the edge and that power that we saw at the end of the year, if he can continue that and if he can get better than that, then we have the potential to have an incredibly strong defense. If we're kind of like we were at the beginning of last year where we're not really getting contained on the edge, we're not really pressuring the quarterback, Mm -hmm. then that that spells trouble for me. And so for me, I'm going to go Connor O'Toole. I want to highlight him and see what he does next year. I'm going to go with Zamaya Vaughn. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the dude uh, led the Pac-12 in um, pass, pass breakups and deflections next year. That'd yeah. be awesome. He's I love that, that pick as well. He's long. He's fast. The dude can stick with. Has so, a nose for the ball too. Yeah, He can stick with those, those elite wide receivers with their speed. Mm-hmm. One of the so, plays that really sticks out to me is when um, we were playing Oregon State at home last year. And um, the receiver for Oregon State, they were about maybe the 5, 10 yard line. Receiver for Oregon State runs a slant route into the end zone. Zamaya Vaughn had yes. it covered like a blanket. I remember that. And punched um, the perfect ball out. Perfect left arm reach over. Yeah, perfect left arm reach over. Blocked the TD from happening. And that was the moment where I was like, wow, okay, this guy's got the skill. He yes. hung with that quick receiver on an incredibly tight slant route, hard to stop, and made the perfect defensive exactly. play. One person I do want to give an honor mention to is uh, Samante Pepe. 
Yeah. The dude is massive. The dude can completely out and change, yeah. change the course of a game. Shockingly fast is oh, how I would describe yeah. him. He's it's running yeah. down quarterbacks after he gets to the middle. It's insane. And how do you not love this smile? Where is he? The dude looks like he's the nicest man in the world. But I would never... How do you not love this man? <laughs> how are, yeah, he, he looks, he looks he like looks the awesome. nicest man in the world, but also like a freaking He'll destroy monster. You. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to give him a little shout out. Okay, let's go to offensive X factors. So, actually, you can start this one out, Ethan, because you went last on defense. Um, hmm. I, I, I can go. Yeah, I, I don't have one right now. I have a lot in my head, but you can continue, Tanner. For me, the offensive X factor is going to be Brant Keithy. You mean my guy? <laughs> okay. I know it's the low-hanging fruit, but how he comes back from the ACL is going to be critical. He is a walking mismatch. He is one of the most dynamic offensive players Utah has ever had on their campus. He is basically the number one target. He has a good rapport with Cam Rising. And so I think if Keithy is good right away, the offense is going to be good right away. If Keithy's slow out of the gates, the offense also might be slow out of the gates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't really deny what you're saying. If any of you guys listen to Bill Riley of their interviews, so this is a conversation with Brant Keithy, tight end, wide receiver, Let's just call him an all-around offensive, offensive weapon. weapon. <laughs> and that's ex- that's exactly what he is. Like, I've said it many times, my greatest regret, he lined up his quarterback, goal line, and someone false started. We were about to see something we've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was a pass. I'm just telling you right now, he played quarterback in high school. <laughs> He's an all-around offensive weapon. Um, For me, I think – my X factor is going to be Money Parks. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. losing a guy named like Jalen Dixon, the speed he has. We had that jet sweep 10 yards every single time. A yeah. touchdown almost every single time. We Good things it. happened when Jalen Dixon got yes. the ball. And I feel like Money Parks can Money go Parks. into that role. Um, He's quick. The dude, obviously, he's, he's money. You know. Yes, sir. Um, His first ever catch a touchdown against USC. Come it's on. Big. It's so fun to see. Um, Again, I think he has – um, some breakaway speed. I love his. I love the the prototype. He has 5'10", 140, 175. The dude is quick. The dude has hands. I love to see him have a great year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that pick a lot because if we do have a breakout receiver, Money Parks would definitely be a huge factor. I think he's the most likely out of our out of our group. To be yeah. honest, I like Pittman. But that's a good. We'll yeah, that's a good choice as well. Yeah. For me, it's a split between JJ or Cam because they both are critical. But in terms of X Factor, I mean, Cam's name should be X Factor. Yeah, he, he has everything you He's want. He's the alpha from X dog. Factor. He has every intangible that you could ever want. And when he takes over the game like he did against USC, especially that first time, he is the X Factor. He's the guy. He was doing everything all over the field. So for me, I got to go with Cam as our X Factor. He can run. He can pass. He just wills the offense to victory. And so I, I think third down player ever. exactly our, dude, our third down stats are actually absurd. He, he throws like 80% completion percentage on third down and runs for like 10 yards a pop. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, Cam Rising look against, especially against USC, look like the best player on the field with the Heisman, which is finalist. He the, actually the, outplayed him. Well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where when the lights are shining brightest, Cam Rising shows up. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we have some inju- we ha- he had some in- injuries when it comes down to it. When it comes to those biggest games like the Rose Bowl, yeah. Hopefully, that doesn't ch- that doesn't affect him and that doesn't continue to be the narrative. But when Camerizing is playing, the dude's the dude's a beast. I like that pick. Yeah. Him. Well, uh, thank you guys very much for listening. This has been an edition of Let's Talk Utes. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. You know, we tell respond us- to every yeah. comment. Tell us who your X factors are. You know, tell us what you're looking for in this fall camp. We will keep you updated with weekly updates as far as, you know, what's the rumblings at fall camp. And, you know, obviously weekly through the season, we'll be doing game previews and game recaps. And so thank you very much for listening and we will see you next time.